cost control software. In this video, we're going to get right into auto cycle counting. I'm going to show this with the newest release, the 2018 version, but this uh, product is available in past versions of NAV, and I'm sure it will be available in future versions of NAV as well. So uh, call, contact me if you have any questions about versioning. Now, I'm in here as the purchasing agent, and I want you to see one little thing. In the Departments menu under, let's just do it this way. Uh, I'm going to go to Departments menu. You've seen this before. I've got Auto Cycle Counting positioned here. There is the, the Cycle Counts where you actually do the counting. There's a series of reports. I'm not going to take you through those in this video. There is the uh, History, which is the uh, uh, all the uh, results of all the accounts that you've done. We store everything in detail. And there's some setup, which I also I'm not going to take you into today. I'm going to focus on the uh, cycle count. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this and then add that to the actions on the Roll Center ribbon. I want this to be uh, right off of your Roll Center. So click that if you haven't done so already and then go into your Roll Center and you'll see it's added cycle counting choice right here. And you can do everything that you need to do from this one choice to start doing your counting. So let's open this up. I want to see, oh, I do have some already in here. So I'm going to delete what's in here because I want you to see this from scratch. And I'll go ahead and delete all these lines. There we go. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull into this journal. This is like a standard NAV journal, but it's specific for counting inventory items. The items that we want to count on this week or this month. We don't count all the items. We do a cycle count and we pick out which specific items we want to do a count on. And you kind of do that with the get items option. This goes from left to right. Get items, then I'll talk about the worksheet in just a second. So we'll get items. So this is the items and it's asked for the number of days between the, the recount, the past transaction days to include, how far back do we want to go, do we want to pre-fill the, the count, uh, include blank locations or variants, yes or no? And then these are the four main criteria down here, whether you're wanting to count high transaction uh, inventory. In other words, if it turns a lot and fr very frequently turns the inventory, you might want to include that in your count of items based on high transactional inventory because those are the parts that maybe could easily be lost. Well, you don't have to. It's, it's, it can be excluded. You can pick items that have high value. So if it's an expensive item, maybe that's the type of items that you want to count on a regular uh, basis. And you can pick and choose the number of items to display in this particular count. Okay, Or you could say based on lead times. I want to count all my long lead time items. You could just check this and say how many items do you want to uh, look at. So we'll say uh, 30 items only. Okay, Or maybe just uh, 10 items okay from from the last time you counted so what it's doing is looking well if this has been counted within the last 20 days then I don't need to recount it so I'm going to pick items that the 10 items that haven't been counted in the last 20 days those are the ones that it's going to bring into the display I'm not going to do that one either and then inactivity items so you may want to include inventory that has been very inactive and go and count those items to be sure that they're correct I'm not going to do that so I am going to do this one right here the high value so I'm going to include high value items and I'm only going to include 10 of those items but I will include all the locations the warehouse locations blue green red, whatever the locations are in my worksheet. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to say OK. And it's going to go out and I just OK this and it's reading and it pulls them in. So these are the items that have high value to them that we want to count. So it's pulled these in. Notice these. this item uh, is in the blue, red, and yellow warehouse. The next item, the 1972W, is in the uh, blue, green, and red warehouse. So you can see, and if I scroll down, there should only be 10 items in here uh, that are 
those high value items. And so what we're going to do is think in terms of your workflow. What would you be doing? You've brought these into the worksheet to be counted and you've got a couple options now. You could print out a worksheet. You could say, okay, the I'm going to I kind of call this the low cost solution because you could just print this report and put this on a clipboard and take it out in the warehouse. It tells you the items that you need to count, the location, and if there was a bin number or shelf number, those would show here as well. And you would just write down the actual quantity that you accounted and turn this report in. And then somebody would key in the results into the worksheet that I just showed you. Now that's the low cost solution. A little higher cost solution is if you want this to be a scan function. You want to have a hand scanner or a, some kind of capture device or a tablet, and then you go out with the tablet, which would basically have the same screen right here on your tablet, and then you would put in the cycle count quantity that you want that you that you found as you walk through um, your blue location or the red location. If you're going to do blue location, I would probably do all the blues uh, together, then all the reds together. Uh, so that you're in the same uh, physical building. Okay, but you're really recording then the results here. And then if there is a variance, so let's say you're, you checked on this uh, whiteboard and it turns out there was really only three of them out there, you would put three in there. This would come right off of that uh, worksheet that I showed you, right? Okay, and you come down to each of the items that you're checking and you put in the actual the actual uh, results of that test. And then it shows you, not the test, of that count. And then it shows you the uh, adjusted quantity that you've got to adjust your inventory because your inventory is off. The current inventory says, you know, it shows uh, 83. You found 80, so we've got to make an adjustment down to 3. So it is basically going through and you're just going to be answering these questions. And then you're going to post it, right? So you would come in and you would say uh, post. So we're going to come in here. Do you want to post the journal? Yes, it is. Boom, boom. The lines were successfully posted. So you now made adjustments to your quantity on hand. So let's fact, I'm going to go to the 1973W. 1973 W, I gotta remember that. 1973 W, 1972 W. See, I even can't write it down right. Okay, so let's go, we're gonna go and check that item and see what happens. So let's go over to our item list. And we're gonna go find that item, 1972 W. Here it is. And let's go take a look. We'll edit this item. And I want to take a look at the counts on this item. Actually, I'm going to look at the... Uh, I'm going to go to navigate here to the uh, ledger. Here we go. In entries. I want to look at the ledger entries. And I want to see if our... Uh, there it is right there. <laughs> That's the entry right there. So there's the minus one. Um... And notice it shows ACC automatic cycle counting transaction number four, negative adjustment of minus one at the blue location. So we've made basically a ledger entry or an adjustment to the quantity on hand of this item through the auto cycle uh, process. It's just that simple. Just that simple. And hopefully you could uh, uh, see yourself using this kind of feature uh, in your uh, business, whether it's for um, using it as I showed it, which is the, uh, the low-cost solution. Just put it on a clipboard and do your testing that way. Or to actually uh, interface this with a scan a scanner device or a tablet or some kind of methodology so that you can walk around and key the results into your tablet and then uh, do the posting that way. Either way, it works just fine. If you have questions on anything that I've shown you here, I encourage you to give me a call. My name again is Rick Baxter, Cost Control Software in Carmel, Indiana. Thanks so much. Hope you like this.